All right, so in this video, we're going to see how to write nuclear reactions instead of just having ones that are all set and you just got to finish, you know, fill in the missing piece. So just a reminder, these are some particles we should know, um, like important nuclear particles. I'll post this file under the notes, um, but just look them over. Make sure you're familiar with, you know, electrons, neutrons, and all of those types of things. So let's see how we can kind of write some nuclear equation. So the first one we're going to look at is alpha decay. So alpha decay is basically when an atom that is unstable gives off an alpha particle. So let's start by writing uranium-238. So we know it's uranium, so we write a U, and then we got to figure out its atomic number. So we consult the periodic table, we see it has 92 protons, so I put a 92 on the bottom. And because it's 238, that means its mass number is 238. So if uranium-238 is undergoing alpha decay, it means it's unstable now, something happens, and it releases an alpha particle. Now, one thing about these reactions is we never write minus. We never write like 238, 92, it's releasing an alpha particle. We never write anything like this. It's always positive um, things. So it's always, okay, if it released it, it's there after. We never write minus uh, when we do these. So anyway, here we go. Uranium-238 is released an alpha particle. What is left? So we do our balancing game. Again, we say the arrow is an equal sign. So this is going to be a 90 on the bottom because 90 plus 2 is 92. This is going to be a 234 on top. I look up element 90 on the periodic table. I find it's thorium. So uranium-238, when it undergoes alpha decay, effectively becomes thorium-234, and then an alpha particle has just gone off somewhere. So here's radon-222. So I find radon. Radon is Rn. I find on the periodic table it has 86 protons, and again, it's 222, so I put that up top. If it releases an alpha particle, 4 over 2. If I want to write helium instead, that's also fine for an alpha particle. And then, okay, this is going to be 84, because 84 plus 2 is 86. This is going to be 218, and then I find element 84 on the periodic table, and that is polonium. So that is alpha decay. It's a very common type of reaction where alpha, alpha particles given off, and then a new atom is created. All right, so let's look at beta decay. So carbon-14, it's carbon, it's got six protons, 14 total mass, it's gonna release a beta particle. So we need to know a beta particle is basically an electron. It's got a negative one on the bottom because it has a negative charge and no mass. So what happens if we do that? Start at the top number, it's gonna be 14 because 14 plus zero is 14. And the bottom number, be careful, is gonna be seven because seven plus negative one is six and then element seven is nitrogen. So beta decay, it seems strange to say decay. Some people are confused because like this doesn't look like decay. It's still a form of decay. Nitrogen, these numbers have to add up. So when carbon-14 undergoes beta decay, it actually becomes nitrogen-14. Here is nitrogen-16, so it's N, it's got seven protons and mass of 16. It's gonna release a beta particle. Again, I can put E if I prefer for an electron. And then the numbers, this will be 16, this will be 8, because 8 plus negative 1 is 7, so this will be oxygen. So this is what beta decay looks like. Very similar to alpha decay, except it's producing a beta particle. All right, next, let's say gamma decay. The gamma decay is a strange one, because, okay, aluminum 28. So Al, it's got a 13 and 28. Now you have a star here, an asterisk. You can put that here. That just means it has a little excess energy. So when it gives off a gamma ray, we know gamma is zero over zero. So it basically doesn't change the numbers at all. It just means it's a less energetic atom it becomes. Gamma decay is not very interesting. Gamma decay of barium 137. So it's barium, it's got 56 protons, 137. Probably should have put a star here too. Sometimes you see a star meaning it has excess energy. Again, I don't find gamma very interesting. So zero over zero. Gamma doesn't really change the atom, it just changes the energy um, that the atom has. So it's not a very interesting nuclear reaction. All right, positron emission. This is something that we need to know. I've got magnesium, and again, we've got that. It's releasing a positron. So you need to know what a positron is. It's basically an electron with a positive charge instead of negative. So the bottom number is one, but the mass is zero, because positrons like electrons, let's just say positron, not positeon, sorry about that. Um, electrons, positrons have effectively no mass. So then what else is becoming here? This will be a 23 on top, because 23 plus zero is 23, and then this will be an 11 on the bottom, because 11 plus one is 12, and that will be sodium. So that is what positron emission is. 
Electron capture is a little different. I've got rubidium, 83. So I look up rubidium on the periodic table, and that has 37. So electron capture means it's actually going to take in an electron. So I'm going to write plus on the left side of the arrow, and an electron is negative 1 of the 0 on top. So it's actually pulling an electron in. So the top number is 83. And what is 37 plus negative 1? It's actually 36, and that's going to be krypton. So electron capture is the only one where you see the particle on the left side because it's actually combining with it. All the other ones, the particle was on the right side because it was giving it off. So these are the main forms of decay. Again, electron capture may not be considered decay, but it is a common reaction that occurs. The thing are reactions that are a little more complicated. Um, so the best way to start these is to start with the arrow and say what was there before and what was there after. So here a neutron collides with boron 10. So in order for this to happen, a boron 10 atom, so boron is B, 10, and it's going to, uh, atomic number 5, is colliding with a neutron. So neutron is 1 over 0. We need to know that. It has a mass of 1, but no protons. So that's what's on the left. A neutron collides with boron 10, results in a formation of another element, not given to us, and the release of an alpha particle. So an alpha particle is created in this process, plus some mystery element. we got to figure this out now. So bottom, 5 and 0 is 5. So 2 plus what is 5? It'll be 3. And then on top, 10 plus 11 is, excuse me, 10 plus 1 is 11. So on the top over here, we'll have a 7. And then the 3 means it's lithium. So this is the complete reaction. When boron 10 hits, is hit by a neutron, it releases an alpha particle and creates lithium 7. Here, Einsteinium 252 is bombarded with a beryllium atom. Bombarded means just hit with the beryllium atom. So Einsteinium 252, so Einsteinium, we look on the periodic table, is going to be ES. And we're going to find that element, and we're going to find its atomic number on the periodic table. So it's 99. So that's Einsteinium. It's hit with a beryllium 9. So beryllium 9 is BE is beryllium with four protons, total mass of 9. It produces some new element, which we don't know, and three neutrons. So again, three neutrons we can write like this if we like, or you could just write a neutron three times. That's a little tedious, but it's the same idea and then some other element. So let's start at the bottom. 99 plus 4 is 103. So then on the bottom here, I need 103 because 3 neutrons, the bottom is 0. So 103 plus 3 times 0, it's still going to be 103. And then up top, 252 plus 9 is 261. So I need 261 here. But keep in mind, there's 3 neutrons, so I'm effectively getting 3 from this. So I say what plus 3 is 261? It is 258. And then again, element 103, I consult the periodic table. It is Lorentzium, and so this is a balanced reaction. Einsteinium, when it's hit with beryllium, 9 produces Lorentzium and 3 neutrons. So 252 plus 9 is 261. 258 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is also 261. So this is how you write nuclear reactions. Just take some practice to get used to, but basically the big thing is remember your arrow is an equal sign, and everything on each side of it, both the top and the bottom line, need to be equal on either side of the arrow. And that is it. So until next time, I am Derek Chinova. Have a delightful day.